This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Michiru and Amine eventually invite me on a shopping trip. Probably found it a little hard to watch me guarding Sakaki's invisible afterimage. It really didn't seem like Sakaki was likely to step outside of her room today, so I decided to accept. Sure, you really just wanted an excuse to get me out of here. We picked up a bunch of small miscellaneous items for Amine on the previous shopping trip, but today it's mainly bulky items like tissue paper and rice. All three of us have our hands pretty full by the end. Definitely would have been difficult with just the two girls. I don't really mind. Also, uh, the sambar is one thing, but I'm really having a hard time imagining you carrying 10 kilos of rice on that motorcycle. <laughs> That's why she takes the bike on her truck. I can just see her roaring down the street on that ridiculously low-riding chopper she calls <laughs> Bobataro with a big sack of rice strapped to her back like some backwoods grandma. Then again, I'm in a puttering alone happily in a prototypical country mini-truck packed to the gills with provisions would also be pretty comical, but unlike the first case, it's funny because she'd look so perfectly appropriate in that picture. Probably better not to mention it. What is with people being like, I can't carry toilet paper, it hurts my fingers, like what, this is the second time this Ruthus has happened, first Makina, now Michiru. Are you are you guys like are what do they wrap toilet paper in like steel? I don't even I don't even understand what's happening. We need a CG for this if I want to understand this fully. Temporarily lowering a package of 12 recycled paper rolls onto the ground, Mitru shakes her hands in pain. Toilet paper's not heavy. It's it's just it's it's large and awkward maybe. Unless they bought the Costco pack of like 200 rolls, but they clearly didn't. So toughen up, Mitru. Come on. Her index and middle fingers are already marked with bright red lines. No way to get around it when you're carrying those things. Is Japanese toilet paper just wrapped differently than American toilet paper? I, I don't I don't get it. I assume toilet paper looks and is the same in Japan. I'm just wondering how they, they package it. Mm -hmm. If you're asking me to say that Amine is attractive, you're dead wrong. Hmm? What? My listless response is met with two vaguely reproachful glares. <laughs> What's with the look? And the groaning? Sorry, I'm thinking about which which Girl Scout cookies to put in an order for. Do me a favor and cut it out with the synchronized scorn. And what do you mean the third time? They answer my question with a pair of exaggerated American-style shrugs. I feel I feel attacked. After another set of deep simultaneous sighs, they begin talking to each other instead of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michiru, you have the best facial expressions by far. Hmm. So it would seem I've fallen out of the conversation twice before without even realizing it. Putting aside this irritating little routine, I do feel slightly guilty about whiffing on their thoughtful attempts to feed me setup lines. Yeah, I guess I was a little lost in thought. Didn't mean to ignore you guys. Sorry about that. Amine and Michiru glance at each other and exchange brief, slightly tired little sighs. But when Amine turns back to look at me in the eye, there's an oddly gentle expression on her face. 
No, it's about Girl Scout cookies. Do you? Again, I don't have a job right now, so I really gotta choose carefully which ones I want to order because I'm on a limited budget. Yeah, that's right. It's all right for me. It's times like these that make you realize women control the world on a pretty fundamental level. How has Sakaki been doing lately, from what you've seen? Anything noticeably different? Amine shakes her head slowly. Hmm. I see. Sakaki's trying to at least appear calm around me. But even so, it seems she isn't completely able to hide the turmoil underneath the surface. And Michiru actually suffers from depression, so we gotta stop that. Food definitely does help. I will say that. Ugh. Amine delivers this line with a guffaw and a friendly smack to my ass. Okay, that's inappropriate. You don't get to do that. Not only am I unable to help Sakaki, but I've ended up getting my classmates worried about me. Truly pathetic. And I now apologize to my pet donkey. He did not deserve that. What am I supposed to do? Yet again, I find myself mired in a simple question that has no clear answer. Ooh, epic music. What's that? Just as we're getting close to the dorm, I notice something slightly out of place. It's the sound of multiple engines moving away from the entrance. Oh, the principal's not even here during summer? So it is literally just us, then. Amine's the only one here with a motor vehicle of any kind, so it's pretty rare to hear engines running this close to school. Oh no, beardy guys are, are driving around. The principal and JB would be the main suspects, but as Michiru pointed out, the former's on vacation, and the latter wouldn't just disappear before I came back. Spurred by a sudden sense of unease, I set off toward the dorm at a run. The instant I open the dorm's front door, Makina comes running up to me. What happened, Makina? Oh no. No! Man, these guys are scumbags. Like, I know I rag on Makina all the time. She don't deserve that. Sakaki came out. Makina nods repeatedly. Well, great. Guys, they're probably just going to Chuck E. Cheese to surprise her for her half-birthday party. This time, the girl slowly shakes her head from side to side. Oh no, not beardy bros. Omni hugs the anxious looking Makina close and begins to lightly stroke her head. Mitri looks up at me, uneasiness in her eyes. You went with them voluntarily? Is this really what you want, Sakaki? An image of Sakaki's desolate expression on the night she dismissed me floats to the surface of my mind. A message? An electronic chime from my cell phone temporarily interrupts my line of thought. Sakaki! 
When I read those lines, the face that flashes before my eyes don't belong to Sakaki. It's the face of a woman who once spoke the same words to me over and over again. A woman who never accomplished anything. Never broke free. And then, a man with an angular face. Reaching his hands out for me, swinging his fists mercilessly into my face. The memories seem to rise up out of the tiny LCD screen and push their way into the present. That idiot! Closing the cell phone, I snap out the words reflexively. Ignoring their concern, I fire off a question at Makina. Makina, what was the model and color of the cars, and how many were there? I see. Nodding, I glance quickly around the room one final time. I'm going. Do you have a car? I could, I could run that far. <laughs> That's the last thing I want to hear from you, Sakaki. I'm sick of it. I won't hesitate anymore. We've both made mistakes, but I'm not about to let us repeat them. Wow! We get into the epic part re early! Yeah! I like this route! <laughs> Gets to the action pretty quickly. Well, not really. It took forever at the beginning. But now we're here. I sprint towards the front gate as fast as I can. It... Shit! The pair of cars carrying Sakaki already left a minute or two ago. For the moment, I need to get my hands on something I can use to pursue them. <laughs> okay, so he's not going to pull an- I can run that far! <laughs> but of course, there aren't any cars conveniently lying around with the key in the ignition. Amine's motorcycle and Sambar are out of, the c out of commission, too. What do I do? Just as I'm running through the various possibilities in my head... Hmm? I hear someone humming a cheerful tune, soon followed by a carefree greeting. Sachi, do you have a motorcycle? Of course. Sachi's returned. On a bicycle. Judging from the tranquil smile on her face, it seems she missed the earlier commotion entirely. Sachi, that's... Her bike is a medium-sized modern model with small tires, more than a little out of sync with the maid uniform. Sachi lowers herself to the ground easily with a little whoopsie-daisy, and then lowers the kickstand with one smooth movement of her leg. A mini velo, eh? An ivory-colored frame with two cute little wheels on either end. Since the tire diameter is small, it's easy to get it moving quickly. Even a few guys in my company without a passion for these things. Even knew a few guys with a passion. <laughs> Treat yourself! <laughs> I love how we're just, like, amicably talking with Sachi about bicycles while this, like, epic music is playing. Hmm. I've heard people say these fiends are small, but well-made. Looks like it's true. With a few quick movements, I inspect the handles, seat, and the quality of the tires. Looks like she might have bought a slightly customized model. The frame seems to have been strengthened in places to endure bumpier conditions. This area does have a lot of unsurfaced or poorly maintained roads. Very typical of Sachi to account for these fiends in advance. <laughs> Sachi, give me the bike! No, no. Well, I don't think Yuji would do that. <laughs> I gotta read. I gotta read that in my worst British voice possibly. Translated literally, it was, "Hey, Sachi, the pound's right worthless these days, so bicycles are bloody cheap. Why not pick yourself up a nice bike for fish and chips prices?" <laughs> The, I just want to say, the longer we talk with her, the farther away Yumiko gets. Sachi, you think I could ride this without issues? <laughs> yeah, you just a quick test ride. Sounds good. I swing myself onto the mini velo and put my feet on the pedals. <laughs> I, I don't let other people request weird voices during visual novels, because then I know it would be like, oh, we're at this heartbreaking scene where, we, where I actually have to act. Now do a weird voice. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See ya! Oh, dang! <laughs> the bike apparently grew wheels or wings and we're flying! <laughs> it's a jet bike! Its wheels whistling cheerfully, Sachi's mini velo zips jauntily around along the road. Are we seriously going to try to catch up with the cars on a bicycle? If this actually works, this this will be very stupid. 
This train's fundamentally designed for riding around town, but fortunately it's capable of reaching a decent speed as well. The cycle computer installed in the center indicates an average velocity of around 35 kilometers per hour. Can't compete with a motorcycle or anything, but it's still an excellent performance for the size. This really is going to be tough. Th this seriously can't possibly work. Excuse me, can it? That said, I'm up against motor vehicles, and they have a head start. There's a decent amount of traffic since it's summer vacation and all, but they still can leave me in the dust easily enough. I'm not going to get anywhere at this rate. Yeah, you, you, you're just thinking that now? Fortunately, they're traveling on a windy, narrow, perfectual road, the sort you'll find often on this type of small peninsula. Country roads present their own opportunities for the experienced rider. With a little skill and luck, it might be possible to catch them even riding a mini velo with a maximum speed of 50 kilometers per hour. No, it would not! This is ridiculous! Assuming that the cars are headed for the metropolitan area, the entrance to the toll road, 15 kilometers ahead, will probably be my last chance to catch them. Any further than that, and a bicycle just won't be enough. I'm pretty sure a bicycle won't be enough now! <laughs> Alright. I feel bad for Sachi, but I'm going to have to treat this fiend a little roughly. Leaning heavily to the right, I turn the bicycle into a farm road that leads to a nearby mountain. This is... this is ridiculous. This... this... this better not work! If this actually works, and it's like, Oh wow! Yuji caught a bunch of guys in cars on a bike when they had a three-minute head start. It's like, okay, this this just threw all semblance of reality out the window. I mean, we kind of also did that with Michiru's route and, like, her alternate personality from the heart transplant, but, like, come on. Soon I'm surrounded by forest. The trail ahead is one of the most more blatant examples of a bad road you're ever likely to see. Still, I push forward without hesitating. Within seconds, leaves and branches are slapping heavily against my face and arms from all sides. I've been prepared for a badly maintained road from the start, but this almost exceeds my expectations. Truly terrible conditions. This region was once used as an army maneuvering ground. Wouldn't surprise me if this thing dates back to those days. The designers clearly weren't interested in ensuring a pleasant or easy ride. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Because clearly these guys who kidnapped Yumiko and are, like, taking her away are going to obey all of the traffic laws. It's impossible to avoid catching the tires on the natural holes and rocks that litter the path. I struggle along the best I can, using the handles and my own weight to avoid the worst obstacles. Still, no matter how skillfully I ride, my speed keeps falling. My feelings of impatience are giving way to outright frustration. <laughs> God damn it! Even so, this is a deliberate, definite shortcut. Cutting straight through will get me to my objective much more quickly than following that meandering road around and around. Will it? Lowering my head, I pump the pedals as fast as possible, warding off branches on in one hand if necessary. The slope of the road begins to grow slightly easier. Eventually, the overhanging trees begin to thin out as well. And suddenly, my field of vision expands dramatically. Seems I've reached the summit of the foothill. The trail's increasingly level underneath me, and it's less of a challenge to move the pedals. Best of all, the practically non-existent road finally changes into something more worthy of the name. Alright, there you are. There is no way he has caught up to them. Absolutely no way. I catch a glimpse of the two black sedans on the prefectural road stretching out below. What? This is ridiculous! Cars like that aren't common around here, and they're exactly as mocking to describe them. Sakaki has to be in one or the other. Oh, dang! Okay, well, we get at least, at least we get a, a boppin' CG. But this is still incredibly stupid. That this is actually working. Oh my gosh, he has such a stink face right now. <laughs> Ugh, I hate riding a bike, but I can do it for my girlfriend, even though she's not my girlfriend yet. <laughs> now it's just a question of catching up, I guess. That winding road that they're following only continues for another seven kilometers or so. I've got to somehow get ahead of them and set up an ambush before they get off. How are you going to do that? Doesn't help that I don't know exactly where they're going. The city's my best guess, and since they're on the road, I can speculate they're trying to take the highway, but I have no proof. <laughs> That's true, Miyazaki movies generally have a scene of a bicycle. If they take a different route, I'm SOL either way. Hmm? At this point, I realize that the cell phone in my breast pocket is vibrating. Amine? Eight missed calls. They must have been startled by that sudden exit. Could always just fill her in later, but I feel bad to make them worry too much. I decide to answer the call. That you, Aminate? I think you're aware, but I'm sort of in the middle of something. Let's talk later. Sorry about that. I'll get in touch once things have calmed down a little. 
What? Look, I'm trying to follow the cars in question. Don't really have time to... I see. So that's what this is about. Ah, sorry. That would be a help. Did Sakaki get in touch or something? Not, per not perfectly, but we should be able to hold a conversation. What's this information? I'm following the Mishima Cape Coast Line. The cars are heading north on the Prefectural Road, and I'm taking a shitty mountain road running almost parallel. Bit of a shortcut. Uh, no. I guess they're heading to Tokyo since Sakaki's father is involved. Am I wrong? <laughs> oh no! It's ta <laughs> It's crazy taxi now. <laughs> Take me through the heliport. <laughs> wow! Didn't expect to get here so fast. <laughs> Come to think of it, I think Sakaki mentioned this before. Apparently, it was built more or less for the exclusive use of the company's top brass and their families. Stuck in my mind as a particularly impressive example of late capitalist excess. Yeah, now that you mention it, but I've heard they weren't using it anymore. Aha! Uh -huh. Seriously? <laughs> you can trust photography nerds with anything. Amine, are you hanging out with the nerdy photography club? <laughs> She's not answering. I see. Makes sense. I can't do a thing if they ship her out of here in the air. That heliport isn't far from the interchange leading to the highway. Maybe 700 or 800 meters. It's entirely plausible, given their current position. And it's hard to think of the unusual situation there be as a coincidence. Forget fishy. It's probably where they're taking her. All right, I'm going to end the call. Thanks. It's helpful to know their destination, but this doesn't make this chase any easier. Once she gets on that helicopter, it's game over. I absolutely have to catch up before then somehow. You, you shouldn't be able to! But seriously, this road is the worst! Con considering you've already kind of caught up to them, I don't think you should be blaming the road. Branches slap across my face, vines catch in my hair, and the rocks randomly lying across the ground are constantly slowing the rotation of my tires. The cars, visible only for brief moments in between gaps in the trees, seem to be slowly be pu up, pulling farther away. SLOWLY pulling farther away? They should be absolutely outspeeding us. My odds of catching up are getting longer. I'm going to need some luck at this point. The mountain road I choose as a shortcut was ideal in terms of distance. At full speed, I might have gotten ahead of them by now. But riding on hilly terrain while pushing my way through thick undergrowth cost me even more time than I'd expected. I have to take advantage of the time lost when they disembark. It's not like I can just drive the whole car into the helicopter. At the very least, it'll take... It's not like they can drive the whole car into the helicopter. At the very least, it'll take them a minute or two to get everyone out of the car and into the chopper. Now that they've pulled ahead, I can only hope that gives me the chance I need to close the gap. Practically tumbling down the descending path branching off the mountain trail, I finally rejoin the prefectural road. The helicopter... The heliport in question is only four or five hundred meters ahead, but the cars are no longer visible. Can I make it? Ignoring the traffic light ahead, I let my momentum carry me across the intersection, weaving in between cross-traffic. Not another car accident! My ears rain from a dozen honking horns as I rush directly towards the heliport. A small facility on a sprawling plot of land surrounded by fences comes into view. This has got to be it, if I remember the map correctly. With a powerful squeal from the brakes, I force the bike from its maximum speed to a halt. Damn! Too late! Just as I'm rolling up to the fence, the sound of a helicopter rotor fills the air. There are ways to get a chopper back on the ground, but few that involve it staying in one piece, and none that are available to me now. And following a car is one thing, but chasing a helicopter on a mini velo would just be absurd. I mean, forget a mini velo. What kind of a vehicle you have? What, no matter what kind of a vehicle you have, keeping up with that thing from the ground is going to be very close to impossible. So much for that plan. I watch as the helicopter slowly rises into the sky and turns its nose into the west. For some reason, the direction of its flight strikes me as a little strange. Wait. They're not going to the city? The helicopter's heading almost directly away from Tokyo. It maintains a course to the west, flying parallel to the Shonen coastline. If I remember correctly, to the west of here, there's... Hmm? 
But as I'm thinking about the helicopter's possible destination... <laughs> Blonde man! Is this Sunahara? <laughs> Took it to you! A completely out-of-place Kanzai drawl uh, rains out into the dry summer air. What? You talking to me? No, I, I don't think it's Sunahara. Compared to Amine's relatively soft Kyoto dialect, he's got a seriously strong accent. Probably from the Kawachi area? I see. In other words, my presence in the middle of the road is obstructing your passage. I love how it specified it was blonde man, not just man. He's got a dome of hair bleached with such a blinding blonde that even Mitru would bow down, and a sharp beak nose that actually works for him somehow. Expensive clothes, too. About the last guy you'd expect to have such a thick drawl. Sunohara is one of the characters from Clanad, which I uh, streamed several years back. He, he was a another Japanese blonde kid who was a absolute idiot. A character redesign might be in order. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love subtle fourth wall breaks, hmm? But that blonde hair isn't the only thing that clashes with the Kanzai accent. Once I get a look at the car he's driving, my eyes stop moving entirely. A Gallardi spider? What's a car like that doing here? Of all the out-of-the-place things in front of me, this is without a doubt the most bizarrely misplaced of all. It's the Lamborghini Company's signature model, an extreme luxury sports car, and a class of a Ferrari. Of a Ferrard, with a sticker with a sticker pr with a sticker price then that could buy you a nice chunk of real estate. Oh, are we gonna steal the car? <laughs> Oh my god, he's gonna brag about it. We're gonna throw him out of the car and steal it. Sorry, I, I need it for a fame. <laughs> you really shouldn't have told him that! You don't say. Hmm. Yeah, this means about as fast as I come. Seriously, hard to believe I'm seeing a car like this in Japan. Well, yeah, you don't want to break the speed limit. In fact, I think that this car is too dangerous for you to have. Anyway, you seriously got a nice ride here. Leave you in close to the man's beak nose. I speak in a very deliberate tone of voice. A very nice ride. <laughs> what the heck? This is the best CG in the game. This is the best CG in the entire game right here. Not even close. <laughs> oh wow! We didn't kick him out of the car either. We actually am taking. We are taking him alone. You know, so we're not. A, we're not a complete scumbag. Actually, we kind of are. The Mitru proved that. But wow, this is this is glorious. I don't- I don't want to advance the text! This is perfect! This is per- this is perfect! <laughs> in an inverse in inverse proportion to the man's fading shriek, the needle of the speedometer soars steadily upward. Amazing! This is- this- you are so right! This is absolutely going to turn into yet another car accident. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time actually riding in one of these things. The acceleration's powerful enough to make my whole body tremble. If this were a carefree joyride, I'd be perfectly content to just tear around all day in this thing. This is a truly magnificent car! <laughs> it's impossible to hold a conversation unless we quite literally scream at each other. Oh, just, it's the anime way. From what my new friend tells me. <laughs> I love how we just took the guy wrong. I thought for sure we were going to kick him out of the car be like, we need this, and steal it from him. But no, we're just like, move aside, I want to drive. <laughs> and now we're like, oh man, <laughs> now we're friends. <laughs> this is still a terrible thing to do, but it's hilarious. <laughs> this car itself hasn't been remodeled in any way, but it still roars as loudly as any hot rod I've ever seen. Absolutely not the sort of car you should be shipping to Japan of all places. Sorry, I gotta catch my girlfriend, she's in a helicopter! <laughs> Puttering around town doing the speed limit in a monster like this would just be disrespectful, don't you think? This guy is remarkably understanding of us just driving the car. 
As the man's pressed back into his seat by the G-Force, his attempt at speech slurs incoherently into a high-pitched little shriek. I gotta say, for this guy's sake, I really hope there's not a car accident with this, because he does not deserve to have his car destroyed. <laughs> In the sky ahead, the helicopter continues its calm journey west along the coast. Maybe the wind's a little rough today. For whatever reason, it's flying at a pretty relaxed pace. It hasn't been getting too far ahead of us. Um, it still doesn't answer the question how what we're going to do even if we do catch up to the helicopter. They're kind of in the sky, and cars can't fly. Unless this is the Ford Anglica from Harry Potter. <laughs> well, it's not JB, though. Yeah, oh, uh, alright then. Of course, that'd still be completely impossible without this absolute beast of a car, but... <laughs> oh, I guess we had an agreement. We were just like, hey, can we borrow the car? Okay. You got a turkey? Awesome. I see. Wouldn't do to show up late to a party, I suppose. Sure, there's a small corporate airport not far from here. Owned and operated by East Beach Transport, a company under the East Beach Railway Group's umbrella, it is mainly used for in-company freight planes carrying parts and equipment from overseas. But every once in a great while, a private jet does fly out of there, and the helicopter carrying Sakaki is headed straight for it. You understand where I'm going with this. Oh, they're f they, oh, of course! They went to an airport so they could take a helicopter to fly to a different airport so they could take a jet to fly to Tokyo. Instead of just driving to Tokyo! <laughs> yeah, the police are... The Popo are definitely going to be after us. And for for justified reason. This guy's like, Who the hell is Sakaki? <laughs> Once the airplane takes off, I'm, it's going to become very close to impossible for me to help Sakaki. I'd probably ship her. I'd probably ship her off to some foreign school if I was in his shoes. There's always a risk of information leaking if you hide her in Japan, but that risk gets a lot smaller overseas. This guy is remarkably understanding that we're stealing his car. Hmm. Right. Sorry. We should be there in less than 20 minutes at this pace. Just tough it out for a while. I feel bad for Blonde Man. The helicopter seems to have increased its speed ever so slightly. Like, here's the thing. Like, this this guy doesn't seem like a bad dude. Like, he's got an expensive car. Yeah, like, he's rich. But, like, he seems like he's, like, a decent dude. Like, yeah, he was showing off his car a little bit, I guess. But, like, he's, he's being remarkably understanding about all of this. It's very gradual, but I think they're starting to increase the distance between us. I'm going to pick up the pace a little. Don't talk, you'll bite your tongue. The instant we turn onto a straight stretch of road, I press the gas pedal to the floor. 